Spock got our parents to give us the genius of our generation. We can reinvent ourselves. We do. And a baby boomer man does not have a receding hairline. He has a progressive face. A baby boomer woman does not have a hot flash. She has a power surge. Save money, man. We drink heavily before going out. <laughs> Glad you made it. Glad you made it. Yes. We reinvent ourselves. A buddy of mine ran in the Wharf Dwarf race for the first time this year, and he's morbidly obese, and he was quickly dead last. Does that matter? No. <clears throat> but the guy who was second to last, right in front of him, starts making fun of my buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy! How's it going on back there? How's it feel to be last? And my friend goes, hey, you really want to know how it feels to be last? And he dropped out of the race. And it was, uh... <laughs> And I traced that back to Dr. Spock. See what I did there? That was... <laughs> One thing we got liberated from was the need to be a success object. And that's particularly true of men in Santa Cruz, I think. Um, <laughs> really, really, when I was a little kid in Bakersfield, there I am, a bright street in Bakersfield, and there were these girls jumping rope to a rhyme about the man they're going to marry. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Doctor, lawyer, Indian, oh my God, you know that, and you've done that, that is so sick. I mean, really, and what, do, what did boomer men do? They took that same thing. Actress, heiress, social worker, nurse, marry a woman with money in her purse. Yes. I have fallen so deeply in love with Julie, who goes comedy. Poet tells jokes in bars. Give me that boy who sleeps in his car. <laughs> I don't just sleep in my car. I wake up in the neighborhood of my choice. <laughs> a sticker on my car says, man, if you lived here, you'd be home by now. 